Rendang is the best curry you will ever have. Rendang was once dubbed the number one among 50 best foods in the whole world by CNN. This in itself speaks volumes. There are numerous variations of rendang in Indonesia and Malaysia. And in this video, I'll be sharing how to make this delicious, scrumptious curry from scratch. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Shinaz and welcome to Naz It Up. Rendang is this caramelized, luscious curry. The meat is slow cooked and stewed for several hours. So this is the type of curry you'd want to cook for a weekend get together. So first, let's get the rendang curry paste ready. I have an array of dry and fresh aromatics, which will be blended in my electric blender. I have soaked some dry red chilies. I also have some spur chilies loads of shallots which will help beautifully caramelize the rendang curry generous amount of garlic i'm using both galango and aromatic ginger i usually keep galango in my freezer galango has a sharper taste in ginger and has a more citrusy and piney flavor another very aromatic uh, root is turmeric if you do not have fresh turmeric you can definitely use turmeric powder I'm just using a tiny bit. These are candle nuts. Candle nuts are native to Indonesia. They help thicken your sauce and gives this velvety texture to the sauce. Uh, please make sure not to eat them raw. Just throw them all into the blender. Add some water and blend away. fine thick rendang paste is ready. The paste smells amazing right now. It's extremely aromatic. I just wanted to mention that you can always prepare the rendang curry paste well in advance. Next, I'm preparing some lemongrass stalks. I'll be using only the soft inner parts of the stalk. Bruise them so that they release its aroma into the curry. Okay, let's talk about the choice of protein for rendang. I have some beef here, really beautiful chuck roast and English cut short ribs. I don't mean to be fussy about the cuts of meat you can or cannot use for rendang but I think I'm a little obsessed about meat with bones in simply for the reason uh, bones render so much of juices. So I had to go to the market myself to the butcher and find the perfect cut for slow cooking and here it is some beautiful English cut short ribs. Also let me quickly tell you about chuck roast. Chuck roast is from the shoulder and neck region of the animal this is again perfect for slow cooking and stewing. All right, it's time to cook. Uh, I'm using my good old Dutch oven here. If you do not have one, please make sure to use a, a heavy bottom pan. First, I'm going to add some coconut oil. So coconut oil goes in, followed by some bruised lemongrass and followed by the rendang curry paste that I just prepared. These spices are immediately going to hit you with its fantastic aroma. So I've added two different kind of chilies. The dried red chilies will lend a smoky aroma to the rendang curry, whereas the fresh red chilies will lend this amazing depth of color. If you live in a place where you can't find red spur chilies, uh, you can definitely use uh, Thai, the red ones, the red Thai bird's eye chilies, but make sure to de-seed them just to have a balanced flavor because they're very hot. So my flame is on medium and I'm going to add these uh, dry 
and powdered spices. As you guys just saw, I added some cardamom pods. You know, helps remove the gamey flavor of red meat. So this is going to do magic to our beef rendang. Keep stirring. Uh, this will take up to 10 to 15 minutes. What we are trying to do is get rid of the excess moisture in the curry and make the curry paste silky and velvety before we add the beef pieces to this paste. Now it's time to add the beef pieces. So beef is the number one choice for rendang because the curry has to be cooked for hours and caramelized properly. In that case, chicken is not a very ideal meat for it because you know the chicken would get shredded within minutes. However, lamb is a good alternative to beef rendang. You would want to nicely saute the meat in the sauce until it loses its raw color. After around five to seven minutes of sauteing, I'm adding some rich coconut milk. Scrape the bottom of the pan and mix well. Time to season the curry. Some salt, some palm sugar, followed by some super blue aromatic, rich in flavor, kaffir lime leaves. Just crush them and throw them in. These are absolutely essential for Southeast Asian cooking and I am in love with them. They are fantastic, beautiful aroma. Go easy with the salt here because we're going to slow cook this curry and you can always add salt if required towards the end of the cooking process. The flame is on medium low. Cover and let the curry simmer until the beef is fork tender. This is how the curry looks after an hour of cooking with the lid closed. The meat is yet to develop the deep color that is typical to rendang curry. Keep stirring occasionally and let it continue to cook on low flame with lid on. After two hours have passed, time to check once again. You can see some oil has accumulated on the top. The beef is fork tender, but we won't stop here. I want the coconut milk to reduce and turn into this rich, silky, caramelized color sauce that is so iconic of randan curry. At this stage, I'm turning the flame to medium and letting it cook uncovered. Keep stirring and checking on the curry from time to time. I'm placing a splatter guard just to be on the safer side. In the meantime, I'm going to prepare the toasted grated coconut. Flame is on high and I'm adding the grated coconut. You can either use frozen or freshly grated coconut. I feel the quality of the coconut butter that we're going to make will be of higher quality if we are using the fresh or frozen over desiccated coconut. This caramel color is the indication that this is ready to be pounded. Once this is done, let it slightly cool and then transfer into a mortar. Pound well until the coconut releases its oil. This is essentially coconut butter. Gosh, it smells amazing right now. It's been around two hours and 40 minutes since the curry has been cooking. And I'm adding the caramelized coconut paste into the random curry. Mix well. This is a game changer. I have also prepared some tamarind juice, soaking the pulp of tamarind. Very essential for South Asian and Southeast Asian cooking. Tamarind is sour and has a hint of sweetness. Tamarind paste goes in. Mix well. This is what the curry looks like after three hours. This is smelling absolutely divine right now. 
caramelized beef rendang curry is ready. In the past, rendang was traditionally slow cooked with only coconut milk and an array of spices to preserve the rendang meat pieces, preventing decay and allowing the meat to remain even at room temperature for days. Little did they know that this recipe originating from Western Sumatra would become a national symbol for Indonesia and an icon in the culinary world. I'll be serving this beef rendang with some aromatic rice. Beef rendang goes on the side. Some fresh cucumbers, pieces of lime, and some spurchities, some coconut garnish. Make sure to serve everything warm. Let's see how this has turned out. Mm. Mm. Delicious. What do you say about this soft beef? It's falling apart. I love it. All the hard work, it shows up in this beautiful beef rendang curry. There's decent amount of oil accumulated in the bottom of the pot right now. That oil doesn't come from the coconut oil that I added in the beginning of the cooking process. It's just coconut milk reduced beautifully. Obviously the beef we used was top notch. So that has also rendered all these fats and I'm gonna leave a very nice detailed description below the video. Hopefully that will be helpful. We're gonna eat our dinner because we've been waiting for almost three and a half hours. Yeah, and this has been a test of patience. It's everything that I hoped for. <laughs> <laughs> if you found this video helpful, leave your comment below, hit the like button. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.